welcome back everyone. In our last video, we worked on the HTML. We kind of got some stuff set up here. We're ready to create our graphics and we're gonna use Photoshop to create them. And then I'll show you how we style them. And as you can see here, we're already looking at the style tag. Uh, the, the way we're gonna predominantly do this is apply our background graphic to the body. And then um, that's why we're applying it to the body so that it fills the entire page. We're gonna set a background image we're also going to set the background repeat to determine how we're going to tile it. And then as a precaution, you should always consider a background color and a color and let the graphic sort of help set what you're going to do with that. We already have all of our code in place, so now it's time to create our graphics. And the very first one, what we're going to do is a very simple technique. And honestly, this is an outdated technique. You can actually do this with CSS uh, using background uh, gradients. And um, I, I've got another tutorial on that, but I'm gonna start with the basics and then move forward and show you some other complex ideas. Eventually, it's good to know all of these little techniques to see how this works. So let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a very narrow graphic, but really tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and create file new. I'm gonna make it 200 pixels wide, or no, 20 pixels wide, excuse me, and 800 pixels tall, make it nice and tall. And um, let me take the, there we go. And what we're going to do, is we're just going to do a simple gradient. And one of the things you want to do is you want to make sure you make good use of color. So I'm going to go to colors on the web. And um, I'm just going to go over here. And it's colors on the web. And uh, there's a color tool called the color wizard. If you've seen enough of my videos, you've seen me go here all the time. When you get here, you could just calculate this color but you have to know your colors before you can do this tool. And so I prefer you to use this link, which is the older version. And what I like about it is that you can randomize your color until you find one that you like. So here's a great example. We got all these different colors here and we can make a gradient of all of those colors top to bottom if we want, or we can just do a variation. We can just pick two colors, for example. Let's go ahead and pick, uh, how about these two colors here, which are gonna do a gradient. And we can start dark or we can start light and work our way down. I've seen one that had an ocean picture and as you get further down, it gets darker in color. That was kind of a cool technique. We're just gonna use these two for now. So we're gonna go to Photoshop and we're gonna create a gradient. The gradient tool is hiding under the paint bucket. So if I hold down my mouse, I can get the gradient tool. Now, you'll notice right away there's this gradient of green to white, and it got it because those are the two foreground background colors. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to paste the color I had from before. That's that blue. And then I'm going to take the next one, which is darker, and I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go click on here, and I'm going to paste my color code in there. And now you see those two colors. You can see the gradient. And one of the tricks you, you do want to be careful about is if you do too much of an angled gradient, it looks a little weird. So before you draw your gradient, hold down the shift key. So you want to hold down the shift and click and drag. And we can do a gradient that goes all the way like this, very subtle. Uh, start it lighter, going down darker as we go. So we're just going to go ahead and create this. Very simple tiling gradient. And we're going to save it as a JPEG. That's a nice small file size, not even 1K. I'm going to click on save, and now we're going to have to save it in our folder. Now, here's the folder where I have my HTML files. What I need to do is create another folder and title it images. Some people will title them just IMG, and whatever one you prefer is fine. Just I, I find it's good once you pick one to stick with it. And I'm going to go into that folder, and now I'm just going to call it it's a horizontal one. And I'm just going to copy this right here. So this is my first horizontal graphic. And I'm going to click Save. And now I want to go over here, and here's my URL. Now remember, we're in the Web Graphics folder, and from that folder, we need to create the Images folder. Let me just show you why. Um, notice there's the folder, and there's the Images now. Okay, Images, and I'm going to type. I'm going to paste what I copied and add a JPG. I'm going to save my changes. Now let's just go ahead and take a look at that. Save changes, file save, and we can go in the folder, make sure this is the right folder. I'm thinking, yes it is. And that's horizontal one, 
that we're working on. Actually, that's index, and I just put it on the index page. So let's just go ahead and open that one and take a look. And there we have it. Now, if we zoom out a bit, you'll suddenly see it ends down here because we're only tiling it left to right. So what do we do? We could tile it top to bottom again, but then we're going to have the sharp contrast. Uh, so what I recommend you do is you take the color that's on the bottom and make that the background color of your page. So we have to go back to Photoshop to get that. And it's this one down here. That's the color. So I'm just going to copy that, click OK. And now when I make that our background color, don't forget the hashtag, then that will make it so it's more seamless. So when we get back over to the page and I hit refresh, now it's hard to see where the graphic ends and the background color begins. So that's a nice little technique. And the last thing you want to do is make sure you can read your text. And I can't read that. So now we need a good high contrast. We can use this version of white. Get as white as you can. I generally like to not make a pure white on anything. So I like this particular one because it's not exactly white. If it were all white, it would just be all Fs. But it's not. So we're going to save our changes. We're going to go back to the page. And we're going to hit refresh. And there we go. And let's just view this at normal view. And see, as you can see, tell it's fairly easy to read. Now there's a lot to be desired on this particular graphic, but the point is it's just a straight up and down, very narrow. We just tile it left or right. When we draw our gradient, we want to make sure we just hold down shift so it's a nice even bird that, that you just create that gradient vertically. You don't want to sort of have an angle in there or it might look a little odd. So that was just a straight gradient. And one of the things that we can do is we can create one where we're sort of creating different regions of colors. And so let me show you how I would do that. So we're going to create a new graphic. This time we'll make it wider. We'll make it, I don't know, make about, uh, we can keep it 20. We'll keep it 20 just to begin with. Just create a new one. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple different uh, gradients. And one of the things you can do is you can edit your gradient in here. What you can do is you can click on this. And you can make your gradients so that they have really sharp sorts of uh, transitions from one color to the next. And then we can try another one here. Just click OK. I'm going to drag this over here. And then uh, on this color, I'm going to make that really white or make it really light. So click OK. And then here, I'm going to do the same thing I did over there. I'm going to take that little dude. Uh, hold on. It's this little piece. Ah, oh, it always does that. I'm going to copy this color code here. I'm going to paste it into this color stock. Click OK. And so now we have these kind of very sharp edges, and I'm going to create one more. I'm going to grab the color code from here, copy that, click OK, and then just add another color stop there. And that should be the same color. So we, you see how we have this kind of all one color, and it's okay if their slight gradient one to the next is a little different. That's okay, but you'll see we have this nice, you know, these very sharp edges here. I'm going to click OK. So I created my own little gradient right up here. And I'm going to go ahead and select all. That's control A. And I'm going to do the gradient one more time. And this time I'm going to click at the top, hold down shift again, click all the way to the bottom and let go. Now, um, this is one of those where if you know you want this tiling this particular way, that's great. This has with it all kinds of danger. Usually it's best not to have it do something like this, but I just wanted to show you so you can see how this could work. So we're going to do a file save for web and devices. We can see that. And let's go ahead and save it. And we're going to call this horizontal 2. There. We'll save our changes in here. In our HTML before, we made that horizontal 1. I'm just going to make this change. I'm going to change that to horizontal 2. And then let's take a look at it. So as you may recall, this is what it looked like horizontal 1. And I've already saved my changes. So as soon as I hit refresh, you're going to see all of that change. And there you have it.
Now, here's where you can kind of tell there's a problem because we have that, that change of color here and suddenly our text color needs to change. So this is probably not the best way to do this. If it were me, I would actually create something else and tile this bottom graphic here. You could do something like possibly create a bottom, I don't know how you would do this, a way to sort of block the text from there. But just to show you, we can create our graphics by, by layering it like that. Personally, I recommend having maybe a top section in the middle going down to the bottom. And then I would separate the bottom graphic for use on like a footer at the bottom of the page. So how I might do that is I would just go ahead and I'm going to crop this. I'm actually not going to, I'm going to do something before I crop it. I'm just going to, oops, that was the gradient. <laughs> Undo. Uh, there we go. Uh, so I'm going to get this. Actually, I'm going to use the uh, magic wand tool and click on that color. And I'm going to cut that out and just do a file, new, and paste. Okay. And then we're going to go here. We're just going to chop that off. And chop it off even better. And then, I don't know, wants to keep showing that on the bottom. Maybe that's not a problem. I should probably check to see my layer, make sure everything's okay on there. It looks like that's probably okay. It might, I don't know why it's doing that. Let's just see what it looks like when we do this. We'll save our changes one more time. We're just going to save right over the other one. I'm going to replace it. Come back here, hit refresh. Yeah, it's not doing it. Oh, I know why it's not doing it. The background color. We need to change the background color to match that. So I'm just going to go ahead and get my color code. And I, could, I just like to do it from here, but you could use the eyedropper tool and click on here. And it changes there anyway. So that's going to be our new background color. And so we're going to change it here. Save our changes. Go back and hit refresh. And then one of the things that we can do is if you notice, the header one has the one color, which is this. So I'm just going to copy that and style that for the header one. And then this color is going to be a dark color, probably the other color, which was this right here. Copy that. Paste it there. Save our changes. Hit refresh. <laughs> I did it the reverse of what I wanted to do. Hit refresh. There we go. And then our nav bar is something we're going to do totally different. There's one other technique before I go I'd like to talk about on the uh, horizontal tiling. Oh, I, I mentioned I was going to talk about the bottom there. One of the things that you could do is you could create a footer, for example. And then let's put footer information goes here. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on the HTML. But I've got the footer now, and then we'll just go in here and we'll target the footer. And here we'll do a background image and with a repeat. It's not really huge. Uh, we're just going to paste in what we had there. Uh, and I'll call this horizontal footer, which means I have to give that other image that name. I cancel this. I go here. And now I do a file, uh, save for web and devices. It's 20 by 173. It's also going to be tiled horizontal footer. Save my changes here. Go back here. Hit refresh. And now up oh, our footer information. Did I save my changes in here? I probably didn't. Save changes. Refresh. There's my footer. In which case I have to change the color again. So now the color is going to be this color here. with the hashtag. Save my changes over here. Hit refresh. There it is. Kind of small, so we could go ahead and set the height. Go ahead and set a padding. Zero at the top. One EM on the left and right. Save our changes. Go back here. Hit refresh. There it is. So that's how we would do our code, and we just do a different background image for the footer. Of course, you could just give it background color because I didn't really change anything with that. 
So the last thing you may or may want to do, and I'm going to do it on the footer, is you might want to add a pattern. And I'm going to widen this a little bit because I think it'd be a good idea for you to see how this works. So I'm going to canvas size here, and I'm going to make it like 100. Well, I'll do 140. That was just an accident, but let's keep it that way. All right, so there's my layer, and uh, I'm just going to hide that particular. Oh, well, that's not good. You know what? Let's just do this. So delete the background layer, unhide this, control A, delete. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip these colors. I'm going to get this nice dark color, and I'm going to go to my paint bucket, and I'm going to choose a, uh, a pattern. I'm going to click pattern on here. I'm going to click to see the ones that we have available. Now, there's a lot of different patterns. Each one has its own style, and you can you can add more by clicking on here. You can <coughs> create your own pattern, or you can load patterns. You can find them on the web. You just choose one, click it, paste in there. There you have it. Now we'll save it right over the same title. Replace. Go to the page. Hit refresh, and now I have that background graphic. You will see that there's a little bit of margin on the left and right, so we would want to pull that off by removing margin from the bottom, from the body, excuse me. Zero margin on here. Of course, now my text is hitting the side, so now I'm going to go back and add some padding. I'm going to put half an EM on the top and bottom and a full EM left and right. Hit refresh. Everything moves in except for my stinking footer again. So that's not going to work. We'll have to change that a little bit later. We'll deal with that on another tutorial. For now, I just wanted to point out you can do patterns and you can find them right here in Photoshop and you got a bunch. Of course, you can create your own patterns, but you want to be careful and make sure that they tile very well. And I find that Photoshop does that excellent. And so it should work pretty well tiling it. Um, there's all kinds of techniques you can do. In my next tutorial, I'll give you a couple other ideas as to how you can manipulate the patterns and how you can take something and make it even more visually interesting than just a pattern. Well, stay